Hello everyone. Um, in today's session, we are going to discuss about the structure of coralite and the types of coral reefs. Uh, the learning objective of the class is to study the structure of coralite and types of coral reefs. Session outcome is uh, being familiarized with the structure of coralite. So, what are the different parts of coralite and how coralite formation takes place as well as we will also see or you will be familiarized with the types of coral reefs that are present in the world. So, let us start with the topic. First, let us see what are corals. Now, we are talking about cylindrata, the nidarians. Okay. So, among these uh, cylindrate, there are some special cylindrates which secrete the exoskeleton. Okay. So, these are uh, generally marine ones. They are uh, because they secrete that exoskeleton, these are generally called as coral animals. Okay. They are animals actually and um, these are generally marine and uh, mostly colonial but there are few individual corals too. Uh, most of them are individually if you are talking about they are like a small sea anemone. Okay. And uh, since they secrete the calcareous skeleton, they are called as corals. Okay. See, coral is used in two ways. One, animal. Okay, coral animal. That is a type of cylindrate. Now, when the animal dies, the left skeleton is also called as coral. Coral animal is the animal which secretes the exoskeleton. The left out exoskeleton is called as coral. Be familiarized with that. So, what you are seeing in the pictures there, it is very beautiful corals and all of them are corals actually. Some of them are green, some are red, some are yellow, some blue, purple. All beautiful exoskeleton which are actually calcareous in nature. So, when I am saying calcareous, you should know. Calca the chalk piece what is used in the classroom is a calcium carbonate. Uh, in olden days, at least few years back, uh, they, they used to use this uh, limestone for uh, whitewash and all, like uh, painting the walls. That is also calcium carbonate. Okay. The shells, the molluscan shells, again they are formed of calcium carbonate. So, this coral, or, I mean the skeleton, it is also formed of calcium carbonate. But still it is a beautiful color because they are uh, impregnated or they contain the different salts. And depending upon the type of salt that is present, they will have different colors. You know in chemistry you study about different salts and their hydrated conditions. For example, cop uh, copper, anhydrous copper will be white in color, hydrated one will be blue in color and in different oxidation states, iron appears green, red, isn't it? So, different colors of these corals are because of different types of salts that are present and that is why as you can see on the screen there, all beautiful different shades and different colors of corals are present. Okay. Now, let us see exactly what and how these corals are formed. Now, when I say coral, I am repeating again, it is a exoskeleton okay, um, or around an animal's body. Most of these corals, uh, they are secreted by special one particular class of a cylindrata that is anthozoa. Okay, anthozoa. Uh, recall the classification of uh, cylindrata. Hydrozoa, Scyphozoa and Anthozoa. So, most of the corals are secreted by the members of Anthozoa, but a few, a few of them are also secreted by Hydrozoa members, not by the Scyphozoans. So, usually coral is secreted by polyp members, members which show polypoid stages. Polyp means the sessile forms which are found attached Okay, usually having a cylindrical body that is a polyp. Okay, so coral formation is a nature or a feature seen in polypoid stages, not in medusoid forms. One thing, and the next thing, most of the corals are the members of anthozoa, with the exception of a few. For example, Meliporina or Melipora. Okay, or Milepora, you can pronounce it that way too. So, this is an example for a hydrozoan coral. Okay, there are few hydrozoan corals like Melipora, whereas most of the other corals, they are 
anthozoan members. Okay, and there are there are very beautiful all, with all different possible shades of colors. Now, uh, let's, let's try to understand the structure of coral skeleton. That is the coralite. We are using two terms here. One is coralite, coralite. The other one is coral. Now, see if there is one individual, okay, one individual, one hydra-like in individual, one sea anemone-like individual secretes an exoskeleton around its body. Such exoskeleton, individual exoskeleton, is called as a coralite. Okay, skeleton of one individual. But we know that most of these um, polypoid stages, they are in the form of colonies. So, hundreds and thousands of such individuals, okay, which are staying, which are lying close to each other, they secrete the, uh, their skeleton uh, and it forms a whole mass. Let us say, let us imagine some hundred uh, sea anemone like individuals are secreting their skeleton and this will form a whole mass of uh, coral, such a a mass of coral that is formed by the fusion of uh, this individual skeleton is called as coral. Okay. So, if it is one individual secreting its skeleton, then it is a coralite. And when number of such are present, then this will be together called as coralum. Okay. Be clear about it. So, two terms here. One is coralite if it is a single individual. If, if you are talking about a whole colony which is widespread to from few meters to few kilometers, it is called as coralum. Okay. Yeah. Now, let us uh, see the structure of a coral, coralite. So, I am talking about one individual. You see there. A sea anemone like individual okay, secretes an exoskeleton. Now, it is like say we need a house to stay, is not it? Uh, each room will have walls. Okay, then there will be floor and a roof. Similarly, these polypoid members, since they do not move anywhere, they need to protect themselves. How do they protect? By secreting the calcium carbonate wall around their body. Okay, and this wall is secreted by the cells that are present in the ectodermis. Now, if you take one such house of one polyp or one individual, which is like a stony cup, it will have a basal plate okay it will have a basal plate a plate at the base then surrounded by the wall you see here surrounded by the wall so this wall is called as a theca okay it is cup like so it is called as a theca this wall there is a basal plate and then there is a wall that wall is called as theca okay and then this theca the wall also shows cross walls which will be radiating towards the center and these are called as a septa the cross walls are called as septa isn't it so the cross walls are present they move they come from the peripheral outer wall they move towards the inner wall i mean in a central portion those cross walls are called as a septa or sclerosepta okay and at the center there will be a portion Okay, to which all these scleroceptor uh, fuse that is called as columella. It is called columella. Okay. So, it, that will be, they will be fusing here. They will be fused here. So, that is called as columella. So, um, somewhat in section, uh, if you are seeing, it is somewhat like this. So, if this is a wall, these are all the scleroceptor. Okay. And then at the center, they are going to fuse with the, uh, 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 it is a skeletal mass. And this is called as columella, okay, that is called as columella. So, this is the structure of the coralite. So, each coralite will have a basal disc, okay, there is the first formed one. And around the body of the whole individual, there is a uh, wall, okay. This wall is a protective wall. This wall is called as a theca. Together with the, uh, I mean, uh, the border wall or the outer wall and the floor, the basal disc, it will look like a cup, okay. It looks like as though inside the cup you have kept the uh, sea anemone like individual. And uh, this cup is not simple. Most of the times it shows cross walls, cross walls radiating from outside to inside and that is called as scleroceptra. And this scleroceptra it fuses with the central irregular mass that is called as columella, okay. Yeah. 
Now here we have one more picture again see uh, let me just to zoom it yeah so I think it is much clear now you can very clearly see uh, the basal walls and the septa you know cross walls that are present radiating from periphery to the center and then you can also see the individual animal there and at the opening of the that each core light you can see the animal coming out isn't it so animal is coming out here see the tentacles are present the epidermis and inside that the animal is present okay so this whole set this is one this is second one this is when the first one is when the animal is living so when this animal is living and when this is when the animal is gone it's it's dead the cross wall uh, okay the uh, the uh, what um, the outer wall the theca then the basal plate and these are the scleros uh, septa so this one individual one is called as corlite and many such all together it will be called as corallum corallum that's what i told in my previous uh, slide okay so you can also see the uh, filaments mesenteral filaments then you can see the gastrovascular cavity of the individual the tentacles the mouth everything okay now the question is how this coral uh, formation takes place now in the beginning the ectoderm remember the section of uh, hydra there is ectoderm there is a gastroderm isn't it Extra ectoderm is and the gastroderm is in between that the mesoglea is present more often it is the ectoderm that secretes the calcium carbonate okay so beginning it will be only a basal plate at the basal level just like at in while, while uh, constructing a house we go for foundation isn't it and on that the house is built similarly here first the basal plate will be secreted okay uh, which is called as a skeletal rudiment or a, a prototheca in the beginning and later on what happens on this basal plate the radiating folds uh, will secrete the scleroseptra okay and when the scleroseptra is forming scleroseptra that is the uh, cross walls at the same time when the scleroseptra is being secreted at the outer rim of the body there will be secretion of the outer wall okay whole throughout its body it will secrete the cross, uh, outer wall that together with the basal plate will form will become a uh, cup or a theca okay and uh, then uh, whenever there is a gap between the scleroseptra and the body wall uh, it will be filled with the skeletal material that is nothing but the calcium carbonate so that whole of the body is covered by or surrounded by calcium carbonate skeleton okay so this is how uh, the coral uh, skeleton or the coral light of each individual is formed okay I'll repeat first the basal plate will be formed and then simultaneously the scleroseptra will be secreted and as a margin okay around it these theca will be secreted in such a way that there will be an opening columella through which the polyp or polypoid stage or the um, sea anemone like animal will be uh, moving out okay only its tentacle will be found outside and when the animal is living sometimes it will also retract only the tentacle portion will be the one which is outside for capturing the prey and uh, uh, eating whereas rest of the body is well protected inside that coralite okay and for number of years the animal is going to live like this with its uh, coralite and when when it dies when it is destroyed because of any reason only the skeleton will be left and uh, so the only skeleton because it is formed of calcium carbonate only the skeleton will be left so when we say co corals all those uh, corals that are used in or for ornament purposes they are all formed of these calcium carbonate rudiments of the cilantrata okay yes the next one uh, the next part of this chapter is it's about the coral reefs okay coral reefs you might have heard about the coral reefs at least we are familiar with the, the one uh, coral that is used for the red coral that is used in uh, ornaments in uh, chains and golden chains and mangal sutra and all we use it isn't it they come from this particular these group of animals only uh, about which we, we might be discussing in our next session probably so today let's say how these uh, what is this what are these coral reefs and how they are formed or what are different types actually what are types of uh, coral reefs now 
a coral reef uh, as per as defined by valen uh, it is a ridge or a mound it's or a heap of limestone so it's a heap of limestone and how this heap is formed it is formed by the coral forming animals usually the upper surface of it is towards the surface of the sea and remember it is formed only in, by the sea animal because anthozoans are marine so you'll find them only in the sea so uh, usually it is a it, it is actually a coral reef is a heap okay a heap a mound of limestone just like our chalk mound okay and usually the up, only the upper surface of upper part of this heap will be projected out of the sea so that means it will be visible rest all will be submerged in the water okay and this heap is secreted by the uh, usually the anthozoans a few hydrozoans might be present in that or they might be contributing it to it okay so these heaps are called as coral reefs so how we can define it the coral reefs are nothing but the ridges or the mounds of limestone okay secreted or produced by coral animals or polypoid members of coelenterata or anthozoans uh, present in the sea anything so you can modify it accordingly now these coral reefs are of different types okay these types are based on you can type classified based on uh, which group of animal is involved in production of coral reef for example anthozoa is involved anthozoan coral reefs hydrozoan coral reefs but by, by, uh, here we are classifying it based on um, how they are formed okay so there are three types actually one is fringing reef okay next one is a barrier reef the third one is at all three types are there we'll see one by one the first one is a fringing reef so this fringing reef so fringe forming a fringe okay that that's how the name fringing reef is so in this case the coral reef so those heaps of or those mounds of uh, uh, calcium carbonate or the limestone secreted by the uh, these poly poly polypoid stages are present very close to the island that island might be a most of the times it's a volcanic island or even sometimes a continent okay so these reefs are very close to the such islands and here they might extend about a quarter mile now here what happens there is always a part of the reef that is towards the sea see this part is towards the sea let me use a different color so this part part is towards the sea there is another part which is towards the land isn't it that part which is towards the sea is called as edge or front it is called edge or front and this is the part which will be continuing okay so the living corals are present towards this this part towards the edge or the front and usually uh, when you see towards the island there will be a small channel of water which is around 50 meter to 100 meter channel of water so from the seashore towards the reef there is a small channel of water a very shallow water body and uh, this distance from the, the land towards the reef it is only around 50 meter to 100 meter that is means if you are going for 100 meter race you know what will be the uh, length of the 100 meter only that much that is the length that is the distance between the seashore and the uh, reef that is present okay in between this water is present it is a shallow water body and most one more thing you have to remember the coral reef formation for the coral reef to be formed the water temperature must be at least above 20 degrees celsius okay so that means you won't find these coral reefs anywhere and everywhere it should be about up to or about 20 degree uh, uh, celsius and um, usually you know amount of the light that falls okay and the amount of the sediments that are present also will be uh, controlling the amount of uh, reef that is formed okay 
now so this is a fringing reef so fringing reef is a type of coral reef that is very close to the land particularly volcanic islands okay and here they will be present at a distance of 50 to 100 meter from the land okay forming a shallow water body between the reef and the land and uh, in all type of reefs there will be a outward i mean there will be a part of the reef which is towards the sea towards the sea not towards the island towards the sea is called as edge or a front and this is the growing portion okay this is the growing portion fine the next type of uh, reef is a barrier reef so when i say barrier reef i'm sure you are recalling about uh, the great barrier reef of australia isn't it the great barrier reef now when do you call it as a barrier reef so as the name says barrier it is forming a barrier around the island isn't it so in this case this is also a reef this is also a mound of limestone but the distance between the land and the reef is more okay it is more it will be from half mile to around 10 miles or even more than that if there is such a big distance then that reef will be called as a barrier reef that means it is not present very close to the island it is away from the island compare the picture previous one see in this it is very close as a fringe okay in uh, dresses they'll keep the fringe you know like that but here it is see the gap there is a big gap between the there is a space between see there is a gap okay and the depth of the water is it's more than uh, in case of fringing reef so here uh, the this gap this distance is anywhere from half mile to compare where is 100 meter and where is half mile to uh, 10 miles up to 10 miles or sometimes even more than that okay and uh, most of the times there will be so it will be forming see this is present around the island there will be one usually one opening towards the sea so that something can i mean if uh, people are visiting that they can come through those uh, spaces through those uh, areas or openings okay and this water that is present between the reef and the island okay is called as lagoon so this see this water body this is called as lagoon okay and uh, here that means they are uh, very like characteristic ones so they are much deeper compared to the um, uh, the fringing reef so that means the flora and fauna are also very totally different ones uh, example one of the notable example is the barrier reef so the difference between the fringing reef and the barrier reef is the the distance between the land mass and the uh, barrier I mean the reef okay that is the uh, major difference because of this distance the amount of water present around the island is also varying and even the depth of the water body and here that water body is called as lagoon okay yeah so that is about the fringe uh, barrier reef now let's move to the third type that is the uh, atoll okay it is atoll and here atoll is nothing but a, a lagoon island that means you see in the picture there is a volcanic island coral reef is present very close to it then you call it as a fringing reef in the second case okay in the second case here you see it is the reef is moving away rather the island is sinking okay it is sinking so gap between the reef and the island is increasing and in this case island is totally submerged so what is only left only the reef is left no island in the center that means this is only a water body now okay so such a reef is called as atoll and this atoll is characterized by no land mass at the center only the reef filled with the water and like barrier reef there might be one or more than one entries uh, towards the uh, lagoon or the water body that is present in within the uh, barrier uh, within the reef okay and here the um, uh, lagoons might vary from a uh, few kilometers to 90 kilometer across that is the uh, size of uh, each uh, uh, i mean lagoon okay uh, sometimes there might be only one opening sometimes there might be multiple channels through which uh, somebody can come and there are also uh, like um, 
uh, there uh, the nature the type of uh, flora fauna found within this lagoon might be totally different from the found in the rest of the sea okay and uh, there is also an important thing some of these uh, this kind of uh, lagoons are used uh, for the purpose of uh, like um, uh, for testing missiles and all okay and um, uh, if I have to take the example of Atal reef, there is a uh, Aldabra, okay, and that is present in the Indian Ocean, uh, and it is about 260 uh, miles northeast of uh, Malagasy Republic, okay, and it's somewhere uh, 400 miles from the coast of Africa. That is the place. So uh, this is one classic example for a uh, Atal, okay, Atal reef, where there is only the lagoon and there is no uh, landmass inside the within the uh, a reef okay so that is the third type of a reef coral reef that we can see so there are three types one is first one is fringing reef second one is yeah barrier reef the third one is at all okay yeah so this is uh, so we have one, another example as you can see there that all you see how beautiful it is okay how beautiful it is see this one this is at all only water body and here the a coral this is a this is a coral reef you, you can see here there is also a boat okay so this is one entry this is the second entry some might have only one entry some might have more than one entries okay uh, see the fringing reef uh, if you recall i told uh, some only it is a shallow water body okay so there might be mangrove plants plants and all see very shallow the depth is very less and it is this distance is some 50 to 100 meter only Whereas in case of barrier reef, it is forming a deep channel, see deep channel and this is half mile to 10 mile distance gap between the landmass and the reef, okay. So this, these are three different types of reefs that are present, okay. Now that's all for today's class. Now let's see how much you can recall from the today, from today's session. First one, corallite is or an okay animal second one is individual cylindrata skeleton of a solitary coral coralite and what's your answer yes you are right it is skeleton of a solitary coral coral okay next question prototheca is a nutritive secretion skeleton rudiment larvae exoskeleton so answer is it is a skeleton rudiment okay prototheca is a skeleton rudiment remember when the at the time of formation of coralite so the skeleton rudiment is formed which is called as prototheca okay third question reef building coral require wa water that is which is warm and above we are talking about temperature 10 degrees celsius 20 degrees celsius 40 degrees celsius and 100 degrees celsius okay what is the answer it is to be 20 degrees celsius we said the amount of i mean the temperature of the water must be 20 degree or above that if it is lower than that then you want to see the coral formation so it should be slightly warmer okay yes next one most notable example of a barrier reef i'm sure you know the answer for this florida keys west indies great barrier reef none the answer is yes correct uh, name itself uh, uh, indicates that it's a great barrier reef of Australia. The last question uh, following is a precious coral in India. Okay, Coralum robustum, uh, Fungia, Gorgonia, Thanatula. Answer is Coralium robustum or Rubrum. Summary of the session is calcareous or horny skeleton of cylindrates are called corals. Skeleton of solitary coral skeleton is known as coralite. Coral reefs are of three kinds depending upon how they are formed. Fringing reefs, barrier reefs and atoll are types of corals. And this is my reference for the session. Thank you.